But when people begin to understand how to apply these principles and they begin to practice them and make them a skill, you place your hand over your heart and you say, I'm going to teach you what it feels like to be noble today. I'm going to train you to know what abundance is. And you begin to marry a clear intention with an elevated emotion. Get ready. Because something unusual is going to happen in your life. That's the law. That scientists said that 50% of what you say about your past is not true. Because you're not the same person. You make up stuff. And so then, if feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences. Now, stay with me. Did Greg say we need to think differently? Yes? So how many people in this audience believe that the way you think has something to do with your life? You do, yes? Okay, so feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences, yes? You can remember experiences better because you can remember how they feel, yes? So then, if you can't think greater than how you feel, or feelings have become the means of thinking, are you thinking in the future or are you thinking in the past? And as long as you're thinking in the past, what are you creating more of? Quantum model of reality still applies. And so, if you're feeling the same way every single day, then according to our biological model, it means nothing new is happening in your life. Is that right? So with every new experience, there should be a pretty good emotion, right? You should feel overjoyed or in awe and wonder or excited or inspired or in gratitude or appreciation an elevated emotion. But living by those same familiar emotions means nothing new is happening in your life. And the body as the unconscious mind, as long as we're living in the same familiar feelings, is believing it's in the same past experience 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And if the body's become the mind of that emotion, then the body literally is living in the past. And we can't create a new future holding on to the emotions of the past. So these people began to realize that no one or nothing was worth it. And that the hormones of stress endorse the ego for us to become selfish. And when you marry a clear intention, intention is a thoughtful process, with an elevated emotion that's a heartfelt process, you move into a new state of being. And as they began to remind themselves every single day of who they no longer wanted to be, and they reminded themselves every day of who they did want to be, they began to cause their brain to fire in new sequences and new patterns and new combinations. And whenever you make your brain work differently, you're changing your mind. Because according to neuroscience, mind is the brain in action. Mind is the brain at work. So they reminded themselves every day of who they wanted to be, and they began to fire and wire new circuits in their brain that became the very platform of the foundation of who they would become. But here's the point. They said, I'm not getting up from this meditation until I feel like that person. Now, the privilege of being a human being is that we can make thought more real than anything else. And when the thought in their mind became the experience, their heart began to open and their body as the unconscious mind began to believe it was in that new future in the present moment. And they were literally signaling new genes in new ways ahead of the environment. And as they began to fall in love with themselves and gave thanks before it was mani made manifest, the emotional signature of gratitude means the event has already happened. And so now they were giving their body a taste or a sampling of the future in the present moment. And every day they, they did it over and over again. And they were unmemorizing emotions that kept them connected to the old self. And they were reconditioning the body to a new mind and to a new emotion. And that heart of theirs began to open. And they went from selfish to selfless. And they moved from a state of survival to a state of creation. And when they were no longer thinking and feeling in the same way, 
They move into the fourth quality. They had long moments where they lost track of time and space. What they were doing in their inner world became so real to them that when they opened their eyes, they thought it would be 20 minutes later, and it was an hour and 20 minutes later. And when they did that, that magnificent forebrain, the crowning achievement of the human being, the frontal lobe, the creative center, it has connections to all other parts of your brain. And when you're asking open-ended questions like, what would it be like? How would it have to be? The frontal lobe, like a great symphony leader, looks out of the landscape of the entire brain and begins to select different networks of neurons and seamlessly pieces them together to create a new mind. And the moment the brain begins to fire in tandem, the frontal lobe creates a picture and that picture is called an intention. And when you can make that picture more real than anything else, and you begin to feel inspired by it, your body's no longer living in the past, now it's living in the future. And every day, as they no longer fired and wired the same circuits in their brain and emotionally signaled the same genes in the same way, they were moving into stasis. And then they began to reverse the process. And a new state of being is a new personality. When we did our event in July, we started seeing people having enormous amounts of energy that were stored in their body travel up through their heart and into their brain. And we captured people with a full-on kundalini experience, full-on ecstasy in their brain. And they were common people just like you. And boy, I tell you what, after that experience, they could care less about their checking account. They could care less about their problems. And we saw one lady move into such a state of ecstasy. We were watching her on the camera, on the screen like this. And all of a sudden, we saw, saw her brain get very organized. The front of the brain talking to the back of the brain, the back with the front side to side. Strong level of coherence, and all of a sudden, she went into this high uh, consciousness state called gamma brain waves. And gamma brain waves is super consciousness. And I looked at that screen and I looked at the neuroscientist and I looked at him again and I said, I think she's in ecstasy. And we turned around and she had tears running down her face. She was so connected to something greater. She didn't want the experience to end. She, I'm going to show you pictures of her brain. She wanted to. She, she wanted the moment to elongate. She felt so connected, and all of a sudden, when that posterior pituitary turned on and released all that oxytocin into her brain, guess what it did to the amygdala, where all the stress circuits are? It 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 anesthetized. It shut down fear shut down hostility, shut down sadness. Those circuits are turned off when oxytocin is like that. And the heart begins to open its vascular channels and motility increases. And she feels connected to something greater. And she would never try to force the outcome in that moment. She's already connected to the outcome. She's trusting in the outcome. And we saw it with more than one person. So we've had people around the world heal themselves of all kinds of conditions. We've had people win the lottery. We've had people create new opportunities for themselves because nobody is so special to be excluded from this phenomenon. And the phenomenon is that you are a creator. And the hardest part about all of this, the hardest part, is simply making the time to do it. Making time for our precious selves to decide then, well, geez, I want to be wealthy and abundant. Well, if I want to be wealthy and abundant, then I can't feel lack because a wealthy person never feels lack. And if I feel lack, I'm going to attract lack. Gold only attracts gold. Lead doesn't attract gold. And so then when we see our life now as an initiation and we have to meet the conditions in our life from a greater level of mind every day, then wouldn't it be a good idea every day to ask yourself a question like, what is the greatest expression of myself that I can be today? One lifetime today. Can I demonstrate love? Can I be patient? Can I be filled with energy and enthusiasm? Can I give? Who in history do I admire that I want to be like? 
and you begin to rehearse a new way of being and begin to install the neurological hardware in your brain so you have the circuits in place that when you open your eyes, you're somebody else and you get that heart-centered emotion going, you move out of these survival centers and the moment you open your heart, it's a fact, the Heart Math Institute did the research, take a clear intention and marry it with an elevated emotion and you change matter. You alter DNA at a distance because the thoughts you think are like the electrical charge in the quantum field and the feelings that you emote are like the magnetic charge and how you think and how you feel broadcast an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life. So what are you broadcasting every day? So if you were able to practice it and change your brain and body ahead of the environment every day, then you know your friends would go, you look different. Did you change your hairstyle? No. Really? Did you shave your mustache? No, never had a mustache. Really? Did you lose weight? No, no. Whoa, wow, something's different about you because they're sensing a change in energy. And when you change your energy, you change your life.